underscore, just to underscore what is the difference between quarantine and isolation. Quarantine is the restriction of activities and or the separation of persons who are not ill, but who may have been exposed to a person with confirmed or pro a probable SARS-CoV-2 infection. Isolation, on the other hand, is the separation of persons with known infection to prevent the spread of the virus. Go forward, next slide, please. So, our discharge criteria for home quarantine. Just to remind, the discharge for the quarantine again is for persons who would have been exposed without symptoms. Those are primary contacts, secondary contacts, and the like. Persons in self-quarantine at home will continue to be officially discharged 14 days after the day they were exposed to a suspected or confirmed case once they continue to display no symptoms. If symptoms do develop, please notify your CMOH immediately and arrangements will be made for COVID-19 testing thereafter. Next slide. So what has changed is the discharge criteria for home isolation and for isolation in general. And we broke it down into two broad categories. And this is based on the data um, supported or sent in to me and supported by local and international data as well as vaccination coverage in the country. So we are seeing now asymptomatic cases, persons will be discharged after 10 days from the date at which the sample, the positive sample was taken. So that is persons who never had symptoms at all. A common example that you find is somebody having a positive as they take a test for the purposes of travel. They have no symptoms. You'll be followed for 10 days and once that 10 day elapses and you have no other concerns beyond that, meaning development of symptoms. You'll be discharged after 10 days. Next slide. So for symptomatic cases, and this goes from mild cases all the way up to severe cases, persons will be discharged, and we're looking at a minimum of 10 days after the first had symptoms, and we're adding three days where they don't have any symptoms of the acute or acute symptoms. And in the next slide, I'll show what I mean by acute symptoms, because sometimes as we had stress last week and the week before on long COVID, you see that certain symptoms persist for a very long period of time. For example, shortness of breath, fatigue, and other symptoms. We are looking at the absence of acute symptoms in the presence, or the absence, sorry, of medication. Next slide. So if you develop acute symptoms during the quarantine period, you will be swabbed and treated. And common symptoms for acute infection, which we'll be looking at for Prior to discharge will be cough, fever, runny nose, also called rhinorrhea. Those are the three main ones, but there will be some discussion at the level of the CMOH. If they think there's a, a hint of the acute symptoms continuing, they will make that decision when they take, when they look at that three-day period where they, where they have to add on to the 10 days. Next slide. So we continue to emphasize the importance of getting all recommended vaccine doses, including a booster, when it is your turn to have it. And next slide will just focus on, if you go forward, please. The last slide will just give you, as always, the three Ws, wearing your mask, which is essential to cover your nose, mouth, and chin, wearing appropriately at all points in time, watching your distance and washing your hands, especially if you top objects that might be soiled. For example, even in the workplace, you're looking at handling files or in any other space where you're touching fomites, for example, doorknobs, etc. So.